back to the last question? Yeah. Okay, she talks about a cloak of secrecy. First of all, what does that mean? The cloak of secrecy is the highest secret uh, level of secret in women. And how does that affect the world's knowledge of where the gold actually ever came from? It was designed not to introduce it to the world because it would affect the trade of commerce of the gold, the value of the gold. You know. It was designed to, uh, to, to, the agreement was designed not to expose to everybody because nobody would ever, ever understand the existence of the gold. <coughs> okay, so what does it mean now that you're breaking that cloak of secrecy? What is it? Well, the treaty expired 2012. Therefore, I have to expose the existence of the, uh, the, the existence of the gold and break the cloak of secrecy because the treaty expired. I have the right to do that because everybody is mismanaging the assets already. Okay, so the management of the assets is now going to be under? It's going to be under me and under GDPI and other designated institution that is uh, belong to uh, either the UN, the US government, or any institution that we assign. Okay. Is it true that the banks have hidden the wealth most of the bank have hidden the wealth of the world by putting the accounts and the gold under off-ledger. What does off-ledger mean? Off-ledger means not recorded. You know, I mean, it's like off-balance sheet. It is recorded under trust. So have they stolen the gold? Uh, most of them believe that the gold belongs to them because the treaty expired. And most of the bank are uh, the ones stealing the gold and not giving it to the people. They forgot that the gold is earmarked for the development of the world and for to protect humanity and to take care of humanity. So how much are the banks holding? Well, a lot. <laughs> most of these banks are holding tremendous amount of assets into a several hundred thousand million pounds. Okay, so how do they hide something like that? Because it's off balance sheet. They don't talk about it. It's not in their books. It's not public. It's, it's in the special deposits uh, program. <clears throat> okay, she talks about gold in bunkers in the Philippines. Is there gold bunkers? What does that mean? The bunkers that we recovered in the Philippines are 263 bunkers. They are AI. They are bunkers that are built by the 5,700 years old of civilization. So it means there are advanced bunkers, not primitive like the cave that we talk about. These are bunkers that are automated that they open by itself, it has automatic door, it has sensors and all that. These are the bunkers that is suppressing the air. And believe me or not, one of the bunkers is 17 kilometer long, full of gold. Okay, she refers to an article about the gold that went to the Vatican. What can you tell us about that gold? Vatican have claimed some golds that were taken from them during the Second World War and the First World War that end up in the Philippines. So they decided to give it to them to avoid the war. So we don't want to go to the Catholic, the Catholic Church. We don't want to go to war to the Catholic Church. I gave this gold in 1982 to the Vatican. She refers to an article about Maharlika. What can you tell us about that word? Maharlika 
is the name of the kingdom where we, where, uh, where we are. This country name originally is Maharikan Kingdom that occupied and controlled 185 countries, similar as the Persia Kingdom. Esther, you know, the time of Esther. Um, the, they also control 172 nations. During that time, Maharlika is one of the great kingdoms that has 185 countries, including part of China, belong to Maharlika kingdom. That is the, originally, the name of the Philippines is Maharlika kingdom. So is there an, a nation or many nations within the nation of the Philippines? Yes, there are many nations. You have the indigenous nation, you have the Jiripa nation, you have the other nation that is under the, the Mahalikan kingdom. And she talks about the gold of King Solomon. What is your viewpoint on the gold? Is it, is it biblical? Is it biblically, physically, the actual location that is this that is written that is written in the Bible is in Mindanao, where they call the Solomon mine. So, if we talk about biblical, there's uh, a verse of the Bible that will say jungle. Okay. There's no jungle in Israel. They're all deserts. The real jungle or the real kingdom of Solomon is in this area. So his mining operations were this far away? Yes. He was changed by the The history was changed by many governments. And this is our last question. How how does the gold relate to God and the Bible and humanity? What is the relation, if there is one? Well, I don't want to go through religion, but uh, this gold belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. This is the world of many nations that were put together for 6,000 years. We're supposed to use this code in what is written in the Bible, Besamikda, which is the holy temple. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. The holy temple that will be a, and we will be walking on pavement of gold, yeah. and the actual gold, uh, the actual structure is made out of gold. This is supposed to be designed That's the only way that I can think of. But that's only my opinion because I'm not an expert in biblical and I'm not an expert with, with other things that I'm not alone. Okay. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for the great answers to the question. Thank you. Thank you.